So when you ask me why am I hard, I should be fucking harder. You can't say families without saying lies. Perhaps the only one in the audience that, uh, ha that can relate to my good morning story, because I don't say good morning, because it, it gives me a um, throwback to my boot camp days. What's good about it, Pina? You sorry fucking Mexican cunt. You're the sorriest man in this man's army. So when you tell me good morning, I have negative thoughts about you. You like my wife, Pina? You don't like my wife, Pina? What's wrong with my wife, Pina? No matter what the fuck you said. So, um... I used to say, but I don't anymore. If you say good morning to me, you don't have gym privileges, but you, it's so ingrained in you because you're such retards. And even though I'm telling you this, somebody tomorrow morning in this group, this August group will tell me fucking good morning. If I told you I'm gonna put a bullet in your fucking head, you'd still say good morning because political correctness is a manifestation of lack of self-esteem. You don't really give a fuck if it's a good morning, do you? No. Why do you say it? Because you were taught by your retard parents. The honest of you to fill out the paperwork when I ask about your regrets of your parents, some of you said they don't discuss it with me. I've never asked them. I can only imagine. Most of your the regrets are you. Why would anybody look to you to be their retirement fund, i.e. the agents in the room? Why would anybody look to you and have to live through you vicariously because they didn't accomplish anything. Um, we'll pass out your vagina cream later. Why do I give you vagina cream? Okay, could you read that please? What does it say? Can you read English? Yes. What's it say? Quickly cool. No, no, what's it for? Okay. No, what, what's it for? Wow. It's for itchy vaginas. Fuck, you're gonna, I told you you were gonna have problems last night. I told you you were gonna have pee a pain in my, well, I didn't know you were gonna be an itch in my ass. Asians are problems. We'll get into all that. But the bottom line is everybody's a problem. The, um, we'll talk about, uh, but I think we have enough supply for you. In the 90s, we made you put it on in this seminar. Now, just think about that. Just close your eyes and visualize that. But that's where most of my billions came from, in the 90s. You were locked up here for a week, no cell phones, no outside contact, and I physically beat you. Physically, with my hand. That's most of them. So when you ask me why am I hard, I should be fucking harder. Where's my uh, fucking, uh, there it is. For all the times I've used this, I still have trouble with it. Salam, Vigays, fuck you, you cunt, hello. Some of you are here because this is, you think, the end of your rainbow. There's a rainbow there. And why do I have this fucking slide? I'm embarrassed because a few years ago I made comment and one of you got up in the morning to take a picture of it, to give it to me like I gave a shit. Most of the gestures of friendship that you do, nobody gives a shit about. Just like good morning. You think Steve Jobs gave a fuck? You think Elon? gives a shit. This should really be the seminar of the psychology of high performance people because success leaves clues. And the one thing that my wall of influencers and my hall of fame and even my hall of shame all have in common is they uh, manage their lives in certain fact patterns. This seminar is a new seminar from the one I gave in November. And in August, I started changing the seminar for this year. We tested things in August, we tested them in uh, September, and we tested them, uh, excuse me, August, October, and November. And this is the derivation of those changes. Um, and the results from August, October, and November are unprecedented. We have a uh, young active duty military kid who attended the seminar that uh, he left here September 1, who from the day he left here, as I said last night, to the day he closed, two deals simultaneously was 117 days. That has not been done in uh, 20 years. Closed the deal, got his anchor chairman, got his dream team, got his accountants, got his lawyers, picked an industry, and closed two deals simultaneously on the 29th of uh, December, I believe. 117 days, and we've made the seminar better since he left. Um, and uh, you'll see, you're gonna be the, the um, I don't know, guinea pig's the right word, but guinea pig's good enough, because y'all look like pigs to me. But what did uh, uh, Sarah Palin say? Even if you put fucking lipstick on a, a pig's lips, it's still a fucking pig, isn't it? Everybody knows, no, you know, it's not important who Sarah Palin is. She ran for president, or vice president, excuse me. She realized a system where ordinary men and women make extraordinary sacrifices to fulfill their dreams, because heretofore, this is what you've learned about making money. Shit, and for those of you that have read dozens or even hundreds of books, the pile's bigger, but basically shit. You don't know a fucking thing, i.e. you're here. We're about to close out July. 
seminar. So we're sold out for February through July. My staff tells me we can sell out the whole year before the seminar is over. What does that tell you? You're desperate. You come to me because I'm the last saloon in the last town on the precipice of the earth. And if you go over like they used to say in the old days, some people still in India say, you're going to fall off the edge of the earth into the abyss. You wouldn't come here if you weren't desperate. You come to me out of desperation or inspiration. Some of you think you're inspired. If you still think that after today, then you have mental problems. Nobody in this fucking room is inspired. You're desperate for very different reasons. The gals, the guys, the Asians, the whoever, it doesn't make a shit who you are. You're desperate. You're fed up. There was a movie called Network about 40, 45 years ago where a famous scene, he got an Academy Award for it. He says, I'm fed up and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's why you're here. Why else would an old fucking guy, Asian guy like him with a bald head come here and let me scream at him? Unless he's fucking desperate. Some of you have a few shekels, meaning you got a little money. My wife lost in fur coats at airports more net worth than this whole motherfucking room had. My wife lost in fur coats at, at airports more net worth than this whole fucking room had. So even those of you that have a few shekels don't have any money because of this. There you are. Some of you even look like this poor fucker. There you are. You gotta get to your relatives, your friends, just your general guilt because you got low self-esteem, society, fear to get to your goals. No wonder very few of you have ever reached your goals. And the biggest reason, you can't say families without saying lie. You cannot say family. I know this is a slow group. I said this to the, the, the kids at the Naval Academy. They were slow because they're Navy. But anyway, you can't say families without saying lies. Your family's fucked you up. And more importantly, your mommy and daddy fucked you up. Self-esteem is built the first seven years of life, arguably eight years. Who are you with the first seven or eight years of life? Mama, daddy, maybe, he's probably gone. Some of you are the product of single parents and look at how well that turned out. <laughs> For those of you that think single parents can raise you as good as two parents, you're full of shit. I'll go back to the shit pile. Yep, that's what they talk about now. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I've asked all the audiences I speak to and we're going to talk about all the schools that I talk about in pro bono because two thirds of my time is free now. Pro bono, I'm, I'm not giving back. So don't attribute any bullshit to me. Uh, it's the easiest way to reach the most people of influence for the next generation is go to universities. I tried to talk at, uh, uh, back in the 90s, I talked at grammar school, not grammar schools in the British sense, but grammar schools first six years. Uh, and it was, uh, the kids were too shocked. Uh, I tried junior high schools back in the 90s. The kids couldn't take it. Um, so I've settled in on universities, but it's my way of reaching the next generation. And why haven't you accrued any money? Because this is how you were raised, most of you. Money's dirty. Money's not important. Other value is more important. So how do you ever get here? You don't. There's some people sitting in this room, and for sure on um, YouTube, that in the last, over the holidays, they heard money's dirty, or a derivative thereof. We don't need money. Things are more important. And that's why the millennials are fucked. For those of you that want to save the world, go create something, a service, a product, it's changes a billion lives, i.e. Zuckerberg and Facebook. By definition, you'll change the world and by definition, you'll become instant, not instantly, but you'll create generational wealth and that's what we're here to do. We're here to create in three to seven years, what normally takes a generation. A generation is between 20 and 25 years, depending on whose numbers you look at. In your entire lives, what have you seen? What have you experienced? Mostly losers, weak, lackluster parents, no high performance role model, low bar expectations, little or no accountability, little or no responsibility, leading to little or no accomplishments, leading to your snowflake cunt vagina life, i.e. cunt cream for you. So how can you expect any different results? Some of you pray, Allah be with you, Buddha, whoever the fuck, don't make a shit to me. Some of you uh, have tried to do it with love. If love got the job done, there wouldn't be a fucking person to follow me. I'm gonna say it again real slow, because you look retarded. You look like deers in the headlights. If love got the fucking job done, there wouldn't be any in this fucking thing, room, and there'd be nobody following me. It'd be nice if love got the job done. It'd be nice if prayer worked. I'm not telling you not to pray. I say my prayers. I fall asleep saying my prayers every night and half for about 68 or 69 years. And yes, I wanted to be a priest. And yes, I used to teach Bible study and catechism. I was a little goody two-shoes, church-gone Catholic altar boy. And look what that got me. Fuck all. Yet I have pictures of nuns and priests all along here. Sally and I support several uh, organizations, almost all religious, almost all Catholic. Because once the church gets its fucking thumb up your ass, they own you for life because it's the first seven or eight years the fucking church has you. And when are you building self-esteem? The first seven or eight years. So the Catholic church has its thumb this far up my ass. And when it jerks, I jerk. And I know it intellectually, but I still do it. I can't help myself. And I never ex experienced any sexual abuse. 
I did experience physical abuse. I used to get the shit beat out of me by fucking nuns. They beat me like a rented mule. Thank God for that. Nuns can't beat you anymore. And the holy order, one of the, the biggest holy orders, well, it's actually called Holy Family. And I'm talking to the mother, mother superior from Rome. And she says, it worked, Mr. Pena, but we can't do it anymore. It worked, but we can't do it anymore. And why can't we do it anymore? Political correctness, political correctness. Now, as I said last night, I'm the only guy in town that's created millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions, tens of billions, and even fucking hundreds of billions. But I have the smallest following of any of the financial guys. I'm not talking about personal development because that's a whole, that's a, another joke which we'll talk about later in the seminar. There's nobody that can say this. Not one swinging dick or pair of tits on the planet can say this. Yet why do you listen to their podcast? Why do you read their book? Because they say it's possible even for a fat fucking bald Indian to make it. And they're lying to him because he can't until he came here. When you were growing up, some of your parents said you can be anything you want. That's a fucking lie of the first degree. You can't. In this country, unless you went to Cambridge or Oxford, with rare exception of another one of the two or three schools, you can't be prime minister in this country. It's a fucking lie. Unless you're one of the three or four or five distinct families of heritage in America and you went to an Ivy League school, with rare exception, you can't be president of the United States. That's a fucking lie. Why do your parents tell you it? And that's how the lie gets perpetuated. I'm a first generation Mexican. My mother and grandmother swam the Rio Grande River illegally, entered the country as illegal aliens in 1924. And I'm for building the wall. I'm for building the wall. And I came up with how to pay for the motherfucker before all these other guys. I sell Chapo's money, the drug money, and it's really 35 billion that we confiscated to pay for the wall. The wall had already been done. And now Senator Ted Cruz and uh, even um, uh, the guy, uh, the uh, martial arts guy from Te um, Brain who? Chuck Norris, who used to be a neighbor of mine when I lived there anyway, are saying they'll build the wall with his drug money. I said it on the Joe Rogan show almost two years ago. It's an easy way. Why are you here? You're not here because I've known five presidents. Three of those presidents are from those elite families I alluded to. I had the pleasure of meeting all of them. And yes, I knew President Trump before he was president in a different lifetime. I was um, blessed to be a neighbor of George Bush Sr. And I met uh, John Kennedy, Richard Nixon, and Bill Clinton in other situations in my life. And not because I've met five secretaries of state, Kissinger, Schultz, Vance, Chris Warren Christopher, and Hillary Clinton. You're not here. Some of you don't even know that. You're not here, I believe, because I've met prime ministers, the secretary general of NATO, Governors, senators, ambassadors, generals, and admirals, that's not why you're here. You're here because you're fucking desperate.